When the sun rose the next morning, Dipper was up early to watch the sunrise with Wendy. As husband and wife, they enjoyed watching the sunrise to greet the day. When they finished watching the sunrise, Dipper began to look for Grunkle Stan, but he couldn't find him anywhere. Wendy, have you seen Grunkle Stan anywhere? Dipper asked his wife. Not since last night, why? Wendy replied, questioning Dipper as she said that. Mabel and Pacifica walked out of the hut, as confused they were as to where Grunkle Stan was. What's going on? Mabel asked. Where is Grunkle Stan? Pacifica asked. That's what we're trying to find out. I'm looking for him, Dipper replied. Maybe he went to fish. But the lifeboat is out here on the island, so he wouldn't be at sea, Mabel pointed out. Maybe he went out to get some food. Mabel and I will look around on the island, Pacifica said. Then Wendy thought that she and Dipper should go to the other side of the island, that's a few feet from where they are at. Grunkle Stan may be at the island, that island. We should take a boat and go in there, Dipper, Wendy said, getting on the boat with Dipper. I don't know about this, Wendy. What if Grunkle Stan isn't on that island? Dipper asked, as Wendy started rowing the boat to the other side of the island. If he isn't there, let's hope Mabel and Pacifica found him on the island where we took shelter in, Wendy answered. Then, as she and Dipper arrived on the other island, they saw a body about ten feet away from the ocean. Once Wendy tied up the boat, she and Dipper headed in that direction of the body. Once they got there, they saw a barrel of rum with an arm around it. Wondering on who it was at first, Dipper turned the body to see that it was Grunkle Stan. Wendy and Dipper could see that he was dead. She even checked his pulse just to be sure. Grunkle Stan... He's dead, Dipper said, sounding heartbroken. I'm afraid he is, Mason. I'm so sorry, Wendy said, sadly, hugging her husband. I'll go get Pacifica and Mabel, tell them the bad news, and bring them here. We should do a funeral for him. I think so too, Wendy. I just can't believe he's gone, Dipper replied, softly crying to himself. Wendy was sad too. I'll go get the girls. You and Dipper can drag, dig a grave to put his body in and gather some flowers while you're at it, Wendy said, as she got on the boat to row back to the island. As Dipper was digging the grave and gathering flowers, Wendy rowed back to their hut on the shore. Pacifica and Mabel looked to see Wendy without Dipper and had a feeling that it was bad news, seeing Wendy very sad. Where is he? Did you find him? Pacifica asked, asked, did you find him? Mabel asked, did we did, but Grunkle Stan, he didn't make it. I'm sorry, Wendy sighed sadly, before crying some tears herself. Mabel then began to cry upon here, seeing Wendy cry. Pacifica cried a little, but since she didn't know Grunkle Stan that well, she still felt sorry for Mabel's loss. The girls embraced and each hugged to cry for a bit before all of them hopped onto the boat to row to the island where they found Grunkle Stan's body. When they got there, Dipper had dug a hole to bury Grunkle Stan in, as well as gathered some flowers. Mabel and Pacifica got to say goodbye to Grunkle Stan, before Dipper and Wendy placed his body in the hole and buried it. Once the body was buried, Wendy placed a cross made out of wood, and then placed it behind a grave. Everyone had held some flowers in their hands as Wendy began the funeral. Well, we're gathered here today to say goodbye to someone we lost close to me, Dipper, Mabel, and Grunkle Stan. He was with us for many years, and it was very unfortunate to lose him, Wendy said, as she shed a few tears before speaking again. We aren't sure as to what happened to him. We are here to say that, that we'll go have our lives go on in life. Someday we'll join him in heaven when the time comes. Wendy placed their flowers down. Then Dipper walked up towards the grave. I will always remember you as an uncle and grandpa. You were someone that you were dear to me and Mabel. Now that you're in a better place, may you watch over us, Dipper said, placing the flowers on the grave. I'm sad that you're gone. I do hope you made it to heaven safely. Mabel started to cry in mid-sentence. I hope you're watching us, and we love you, Grunkle Stan. After Mabel placed the flowers down, she began to cry as Wendy and Dipper hugged her. Pacifica did her speech for the funeral, saying that she didn't know him much, but that she is sad that he's gone. 
and as soon as Pacifica placed the flowers, they all went back to the island that they settled in. As Dipper, and Mabel, and Pacifica wanted to be alone, they were in their rooms to have a good cry in a long time. Dipper and Wendy decided to cook breakfast for them. While they were cooking, Dipper had some questions to ask Wendy. Do you know how Grunkle Stan died? And if so, why did he die? Dipper asked. Well, now those are good questions, Mason. I honestly have no idea how to answer them accurately, Wendy answered honestly. I have no idea how he died or why he died, so I'm guessing that either he drowned or suffered a heart attack. Those are all the best answers I could think of, unless he had alcohol poisoning or something. I'm gonna have to go with he had a heart attack. If he drowned in the ocean, he would have. we would have seen his body in the water, and if he had alcohol poisoning, how would it be possible for it to kill someone? Dipper questioned. He did drink a lot of rum from that barrel, so he was mostly in a drunken state when he died. We didn't expect him to die so soon, but now I have to be the leader. And you could be my co-leader, Dipper, Wendy said, stirring up the food in the wooden bowl. What's that you're making, Wendy? Dipper asked. Just making some fruit and coconut milk. It's a dish I made in high school in cooking class. I found the recipe for it in my class and it's really good. Wendy answered. Can I add a banana in it? Dipper asked his wife as she, he chopped off a, a banana. Sure, toss it in, Wendy said. As Dipper did that, they cooked breakfast until it was ready. The evening came and Wendy decided to go swimming at the beach after dinner, mainly because she had her bathing suit in her suitcase that she had brought with her on the cruise. She changed into her bathing suit. Dipper watched as Wendy started to swim in the ocean, making Dipper sigh in love, watching Wendy swim as his dream was with her. Dipper, you okay? Mabel asked, catching Dipper's attention. Hey, Mabel, are you okay? Dipper asked, wanting to check in on Mabel since Grunkle Stan's death had hit her heart in the heart the most. Oh, yeah, I am now. Still healing after losing Grunkle Stan, though. He broke my heart, Mabel said as she sat down with Dipper. I understand how you feel, Mabel. My heart's broken, too. Same with Wendy's. Dipper replied, hugging his sister. Do you know how he died? Mabel asked. Dipper had no idea exactly how Grunkle Stan died. I have no idea. I asked Wendy and we still have no idea how he died. It could have either been alcohol poisoning or possibly from a heart attack. Drowning is another fury, Dipper answered. I just wish he was here with us, Mabel sighed sadly. Same here. I understand how you feel. Dipper said, comforting his sister. I miss Waddles. I wish he was here so I can hug him, Mabel stated. I'm sure Sousa will come and find us. Maybe Ford would as well, Dipper said hopefully. Manly, Dan, and Wendy's brothers, will they save us? Mabel asked. I hope so. Robbie, on the other hand, I'm not sure about him. He is a mystery boy, although he's doing his best to improve his, his behavior, Dipper answered. The next morning after breakfast... Pacifica was watching over the hut while Wendy and Dipper went fishing at sea. Mabel was in the forest, however, exploring the island in hopes to bring food back for the shelter. As Mabel ventured further into the island, the jungle started to thicken with trees, etc. Mabel was venturing to the forbidden part of the jungle, where Grunkle Stan warned her, Dipper, and Pacifica and Wendy never to go there. However, Mabel was just as curious as to what was in the deepest part of the jungle. So she ventured off until she came across a clearing. She looked slowly to her surroundings, and she saw an altar by the campfire, thinking that someone or something lives there. She looked around before disappearing and, and approaching the altar. When she stood in front of it, a stream of blood was streaming down the altar from the top. Mabel then started to believe it was a god. It wasn't long before Mabel began to feel something that was watching her. Seeing that no one was around, it made her feel uneasy. Mabel then ran away from the altar of, in the deepest part of the jungle and returned to the shelter by shore. When she arrived there, Dipper along with Wendy and Pacifica were unloading fish from the boat. They looked to see Mabel breathing heavily. At first, they were worried, so they had to make sure if she was okay. Mabel, you ran very fast. What happened? Wendy asked. Did something happen? Dipper added. I went to the deepest part of the jungle, and I saw blood on an altar. Mabel then began to explain 
knowing that the part of the island that Grunkle stand forbade them to go there. I think God is there, as I saw a stream of blood on the altar. You shouldn't have gone there, Mabel. Grunkle Stan told us not to go there, Dipper said sternly. But Dipper, there was no creature or anyone there, Mabel explained. It doesn't matter, Mabel. You could have hurt yourself or put yourself in danger, Pacifica said. I saw that God bleed like Jesus, Mabel stated. Whatever, just be careful, Mabel. We are just worried about you, Wendy said, shrugging. What Grunkle Stan said about that place not to go off. Off carrying fish with Dipper to their hut. While lunch was being cooked, Wendy and Mabel were out taking a walk by the beach, admiring the nature around them. Wendy looked at Mabel before she looked at her, striking a conversation to have. Mabel, why did you go to that one place on the island that Grunkle Stan told us not to go to? Wendy asked. I'm not mad, I'm just, well, wondering. I was wondering as to why Grunkle Stan wouldn't allow us to go there, so I wanted to check it out. It had an altar with a campfire before it, and it didn't seem dangerous. Like, I mean, I didn't see anyone else living on the island, or any dangerous creatures there. So, I have no idea why Grunkle Stan forbid us going there, Mabel explained. Then Wendy looked up to see a dolphin was washed away on shore. Mabel and Wendy approached the dolphin to see that it was on shore for a while, and it wouldn't make it on land. We have to save this dolphin. It'll die if it doesn't get to sea, Wendy said, as she and Mabel gently lifted the dolphin as best they could. Although lifting it, they were barely able to keep a good grip on the dolphin since the skin was slippery. Within a few minutes, the dolphin was back at sea. The water hitting its skin made it feel happy. I'm glad we saved this little guy, Mabel said, seeing the dolphin swim towards its family in the ocean. It had a family. I couldn't bear to see him suffer on shore, Wendy said, as she spotted a falcon on the sand. It was struggling while being stuck on a net. Upon expecting it, it was some plastic that the falcon was caught in. Wendy remembered having her hunting knife with her, so she pulled out her knife. While using the knife, Wendy cut the plastic as carefully as she could not to hurt herself or the falcon. When she set the falcon free, it wouldn't fly away, it just somehow was stunned. Wendy picked up the falcon and held it close to her body, providing the, her body heat to warm up the falcon. Poor thing, he must be bent for a lot, Mabel sighed, seeing the falcon not doing great. Let's take him back to our hut. I don't, I know what to do if a bird is in this state, Wendy said, when she and Mabel ran all the way back to the hut while carrying the injured falcon. When they returned to the hut, Dipper and Pacifica served lunch for everyone. Wendy ran upstairs with the falcon. Dipper right away knew something was up. What's up with Wendy? Dipper asked. We saved the falcon that was stuck in some plastic, but Wendy saved it. It's most likely injured, so Wendy is looking after it, Pacifica replied. A falcon? I thought there were tropical birds here, Pacifica commented. All kinds of birds lived here. I made a parrot friend right here, Dipper replied, as his parrot friend was standing on a branch, sticking out of the hut wall. He's cool, but a falcon is a different type of bird, Mabel said. While upstairs, Wendy treated the injured falcon, which seemed to work due to Wendy's skills on healing birds. The falcon also stood up and looked at Wendy and fed it a piece of fruit as the falcon took in with its beak. Beak. Wendy, you okay up there? Dipper asked. I just rescued a falcon. He seems to be okay. I put a bandage around its wing. Wendy replied. Then Dipper joined Wendy with the falcon. Are we going to keep him? Dipper asked. We'll just get off this island, Dips. Falcons are wild animals. Although some people like to keep them as pets, Wendy replied. They'll have to stay here if we, um, if we get off this island. He may have a family himself. Can we name him? Dipper suggested. I have a name for him. We'll call him Spock, Wendy replied. He sure is cute. I think falcons are found found and bring us stuff too. I've seen it on TV before, Dipper stated. If you say so, for now let's give this guy some rest for a while, Wendy replied, placing the falcon on a small nest of clothes. After Later that afternoon, Dipper and Wendy were both getting some fruit in the jungle, while Pacifica and Mabel stayed on shore. As Pacifica looked up, 
She saw an ocean on the ship on the ocean. She tried to reach a signal to light it. However, Mabel was near the signal, but decided not to light it. This caused the ship to sail away from the island, and this angered Pacifica as she reached Mabel near the signal. Mabel, why didn't you light the signal? That ship could have gotten us off this island, Pacifica said angrily. I didn't want to light the signal up, mainly because I was busy cutting fruit, Mabel answered. That's just an excuse, Mabel, and that ship could have been our ticket to out of here, Pacifica replied, as Wendy and Dipper returned to the shore with food. What is with this argument? Dipper asked, catching Pacifica and Mabel's attention. Mabel didn't light up the signal she just saw on the ship. Mabel was near it, but she should have lightened it up, Pacifica explained, not sounding too happy. I was cutting some fruit, and I didn't see the ship. If Pacifica told me before, I would have done it, Pacifica stated. Mabel stated, we'll get there at the next ship. It's not a big deal, Wendy scoffed, not wanting to see Pacifica and Mabel argue. I'll build a raft and get myself off the island then, Pacifica scoffed. When she grabbed whatever she could find, she decided to build her own raft. I can say this now, Pacifica's not going to get far with that attitude, Wendy whispered to Dipper. I have to agree with you, Wendy, Dipper added. The two headed inside the hut to check on the falcon. He seemed to be doing well and much better, although he wanted to stay with his friends that helped him. Only until they can get off the island. Whenever the next ship came, that will be anyone's guess on when it will show up.